the birth controllers. Um, they'll lie to you, like I said. If there isn't proper grounding on the trailer, it's telling you, I'm sending power back there all day long. But those brakes, you know what an electromagnet is? You see them at a wrecking yard, and they'll hover that big disc, and they'll go down the middle, and they flip a switch. They turn the power on is what they're doing. And it's that electromagnet grabbing that material. And then if you flip the switch off, the metal falls. That's how an electromagnet works. That's what's inside your braking system. When that magnet hits the face of that wheel drum, it creates drag, and there's a fulcrum, an arm. And it's at the end of the arm. So when it does this, it's stretching springs and pushing those brake drums out, or those brake pads, and engaging them on the side of the brake drum. So that's the more power, stronger it gets. More pushes, hence more braking power. See where I'm going? So the harder you push on the pedal on the truck, the more power is going to the brakes back there. Okay? The problem is, bad grounding, you're not getting anything. So, I'm going to teach you a simple way to test that. As you're going out your driveway, five miles an hour, and all of you, if you do not have the information or the instructions for your brake controller type, go to our website, look up the manufacturer, go to their website, download the PDF, read and learn it. They will recommend you adjust your brakes at 25 miles an hour. Well, if they're set too high and I hit the brakes and they, they cram on, where's my horse? Okay. Up in the corner with his face smash. Five miles an hour, walking speed, no problem. Roll out your driveway, everybody's clear. Gravel works great. Hard surface, it works fine too, but gravel's a better indicator. Roll down your driver's side window, okay? You're gonna listen. And what you're going to do is, you know the little slide button on the controllers? You know the old ones they have them. This is the only time you use these. It's for adjusting and making sure that the brakes are coming on properly. So let's say in this scenario we're in. So you're slowly going to bring that slide bar over. Your foot is not on the brake of the tow vehicle. You're just rolling forward, not touching the brake. Okay? Or the gap. They're paused over, but don't engage. Slowly bring that over. That will engage the brakes on the trailer. Okay? Everybody follow me so far? Then, as you bring that over and it finally goes as far as it can go, the trailer should stop itself and the tow vehicle, without your foot on the brake of the tow vehicle, within 15 to 20 feet without skidding the tires should just roll the friction and just stop. If it's getting the tires on the gravel, or even on paved surface, if that's all you've got, they're set too high. Follow me, because you just put it on full power. But I, but I emphasize, slowly bring it over until it stops, or you're gonna, you might get a surprise if it's set too high. If it isn't enough power and it didn't stop and you're still rolling, then you need to increase your power, okay? It's usually on the left-hand side of the dial, not that big around on the side. The knob on the other side, on the right hand side of most of your controllers, is called a gain knob. Okay? What it is, is a synchronization type of device. So that your brakes, and you can play with them once you have the brake power set up. You can play with it a little bit. You want the brakes on your trailer to come on identical to the brakes on the tow vehicle. That's what that little knob does. Okay? Too low and, and your, your truck will stop, but your trailer's not stopping. You see where I'm going? So you can use that same method, but you just want to dial it in so everything's coming on evenly. Truck stopping the truck, trailer stopping the trailer. That's all that's for. And if you need to read the instructions or have somebody show you, don't be embarrassed. Do it. And because some of these things can get quite complicated. Okay? So that tells you as you're rolling out. Now, it's the same identical procedure when you're loading. Because maybe this time I'm taking one horse. Maybe next time I'm taking two horses. You know, three. It, does, it just depends on what you're hauling. The same thing goes for all these other utility trailers and everything else that have tandem axles that are supposed to have brakes. Um, when it's loaded, you've got an empty setting. I put two tons of concrete bags on this on pallets. Same principle. 
doesn't matter what your load is. It's the weight of that load. And that determines how you set your controller. The nice thing about the controllers that are digital is that I have a base number. When I find my base number, meaning when it's empty, and say it's 2.5, I always have that as my reference. See where I'm going? So if I'm not loaded, and I just had it cranked up to 4.5 with 2,000 pounds of horse in the back, and I'm running empty, I want to take it back down to my base number, 2.5. Then I'm braking equally. Otherwise, if you're over braking, you're going to wear out those brakes exponentially. I mean, quick and create a great deal of heat, and it's not going to be fun for your horses. If you're underloaded and you've got your controller set way too low, and that weight and that inertia is pushing your tow vehicle, you're taxing. I knew one lady, she went through three sets of brakes on a Dodge 250 Ram diesel in what was it, eight months? She had no brakes on the trailer. So everything was relying on the tow vehicle. So it wore those out to the tune of about a thousand bucks a pop. That's a lot of money. Just because the brake controller wasn't working properly. But if you follow my method, if you don't understand and you forget, don't hesitate to get a hold of me and I'll, I'll go through it with you again or I'll send the procedure to you. But set your brakes each time. Compensate for the load. And if you're going to get a digital one, um, Napa stores are great for that. Pilot makes a good one. But like I said, less is more. Plain, simple, and basic. And if they're over three years old, get them replaced. If they're 10 years old, definitely get them replaced. And um, just go from there. But <clears throat> anything I didn't touch on, feel free to buy the DVD or the book. But if not, Email me and I'll answer any questions, you know, until you do understand what I'm trying to teach you.